Hi, my name is Ellis Michaels, and I was diagnosed with Bichette's disease in 1997 at the age of 16. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how Bichette's disease is treated. Now, as much as it absolutely sucks having Bichette's disease, and I'm not going to tell you otherwise, the truth is there's never been a better time to be diagnosed with it. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when I was diagnosed 25 years ago, there weren't nearly as many treatments as there are now. Um, so in that respect, there's never been a better time to be diagnosed with Bichette's. So if you're thinking, man, I'm so unlucky, I get diagnosed with this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, you are really unlucky, but you're not as lucky as you could have been. Um, and another thing that exists now that didn't then is, is like social media, Facebook groups, Reddit, like just places, support groups. So there, there's, having Bichette's now is way better than having it 20, 30 years ago. But onto the treatment. So... I'll start with the most recent treatments, one that wasn't available when I was a teenager, when um, my body was kicking the living shit out of me in every possible way. Um, and these are called biopharmaceuticals, aka biologics. Now these are made from, you guessed it, biological sources, living things in other words. And these have been around for a long time. Um, using biologics for autoimmune diseases is, is, a, is a new thing. but. Biologics in general have been around for, for a very long time. They include things like hormone replacement therapy, um, vaccines, older vaccines, um, blood transfusions, all kinds of stuff. So, so biopharmaceuticals aren't as a as a as a as a thing aren't aren't brand new. Um, these meds tend to be really effective for some people, um, especially when other meds aren't or they can't tolerate other meds, and these. The way these work are they they suppress part of the immune system and by doing so they helped to um, ideally they help to reduce overall symptoms of Bichette's they just kind of they don't target any specific symptom really they just kind of blanket target them all um, so your body has it, it doesn't saying suppress the immune system is kind of it doesn't like just crush your immune system, but specific aspects of it, um, it affects. And uh, examples of some, some bio biologics are like Remicade, Humira, Acterma. There's a bunch of them now. Um, I'm sure you've heard of some of them, but, but those didn't exist. Those are fairly new, like the past 10, 15, 20 years or so, something like that. So, um, yeah, we get those. Uh, another class of drugs that are used are immunosuppressants. Now, these have been around for a long time. Um, these include things like methotrexate, which I was on as a teen, azathioprine, or imuran, which I'm on now. Um, these drugs also work by suppressing certain aspects of the immune system. And like biologics, they, they don't target any specific symptom, really. They just kind of suppress, your, uh, they, they kind of reduce the, the chances of a lot of symptoms. Uh, for some people, they work great. Other people, they don't work at all. These can have some nasty side effects. Um, the one I'm on, as a thioprin, can increase cancer risk, especially over long periods of time. Um, but there are studies from all over the world that show it dramatically reduces eye problems with Bichette's, and I will gladly uh, take 20 more years of being able to see um, and then get in all kinds of cancers and dying uh, 20 years from now over being blind and living for fucking 200 years or whatever, you know, that I, quality over quantity for me, 100%. But, so immunosuppressants or something uh, are, are common. Uh, doctors prescribe them often for to treat the, the overall illness. Um, then we move into steroids. Now, I'm not talking, you know, muscle building, anabolic steroids like testosterone and stuff like that, trenbolone. I'm talking about corticosteroids, um, particularly glucocorticoids. Uh, these are drugs that have powerful anti-inflammatory effects uh, and, and immunosuppressive effects as well. And examples of these are, are like prednisone, um, dexmethasone, methylprednisolone, uh, drug, drugs like this. And these are very common. Um, I, pred, I, I won't go into my story. I, I was on a lot of prednisone for a while and um, it, it was necessary. It probably saved my vision, but it fucked me up in a lot of ways that uh, I'll, I'll talk about in another video. I talk about it in my memoir. If, if you if you're interested, I'll I'll put a link in the in the description. But um, steroids are are great 
short term, they work amazing at reducing inflammation. Um, so that's that's something else doctors often prescribe. Another class of drugs is antibiotics. Bichette's infections are very common with Bichette's disease. Um, all kinds of all kinds of infections. Uh, strep throat is very is is common, um, especially in childhood with people Bichette. So these are um, antibiotics are, are drugs that treat bacterial infections. Um, and they uh, another thing Bichette's can cause a billion skin problems. That's a whole other story too. I, I, I'll make a whole video on the skin problems Bichette's can cause, but um, antibiotics can help a lot. These, you've probably heard of a bunch of these, minocycline, doxycycline, tetracycline, azithromycin, penicillin, uh, azithromycin, dapsone, there's, there's tons of them. And they, they can be prescribed anywhere from a few days to a few years. I, I was on, um, I was on, doxycycline for a couple of years and I was on minocycline for a couple of years um, a little bit later um, and they, they helped at the time. Another drug uh, you might be put on is colchicine. This is an anti-gout medication um, but it, it's used to treat all kinds of skin and joint problems. Some people with Bichette's find it very helpful. I never did personally. I was on it for a while as a teen. Um, didn't do much for me, but some people find it helps immensely with a lot of symptoms. So, uh, colchicine, something you might, uh, you might find yourself being prescribed. Uh, painkillers is the next, well, the next two. We'll start with over-the-counter painkillers, OTC. Um, Bichette's can be extremely painful. That, if you, if you've been living with it for a while, this is no secret to you. And if you've just been diagnosed, I hate to tell you, but Bichette's can be extremely painful at times. Um, between the oral ulcers, the genital ulcers, the joint pain, and everything else, uh, it, it can it can be a fucking nightmare. Fortunately, there's all kinds of drugs to treat it. Now, over-the-counter painkillers include things like ibuprofen, um, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, as opposed to something like prednisone, which is a steroid anti-inflammatory drug, a steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So. Um, so like ibuprofen, aspirin, diclofenac, uh, naproxen, th these are non-steroidal NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs um, that can be extremely helpful, especially, I never found them very helpful with the ulcers up there, up here or down there, but um, with like the joint pain and stuff like that, they, it helped a lot. Um, and then there's acetaminophen, which is, uh, that's, that's, uh, I don't think that that's not an and said that's I think that's I forget what that's that's a salus I, I, I that, that's that's classified differently but it's another pain uh, Tylenol it's a, it's a common over the counter painkiller um, that can be helpful too um, although you have to be careful if you're on drugs that um, affect your liver because to uh, you know acetaminophen can too much can can cause liver problems but so you've got all those over the counter remedies. Um, painkillers to choose from. But then you've got also got prescription painkillers, which are uh, opioids, frankly, the ones that work the best. Um, and these are the heavy hitters. I was on opioids for 10 years straight. Doctors in the 90s, doctors used to just throw Vicodin at me because the pharmaceutical companies used to had all the doctors convinced that they were a much less addictive, much safer alternative to drugs like like morphine and stuff like that, which was all bullshit, of course. They knew it then. I knew it then. Hell, I was a. T I, I knew it at the time. I was just some some dumb teenager, and I I could tell you that Vicodin was hella addictive. But um, for years, it was the only thing that, that kept me from killing myself. I I was just in so much pain, and those Vicodin really did help. But over time, it turned into a problem, and after about ten years, I uh, I, I slowly weaned off of them, came off of them, and everything like that. But um, that being said, if, if you're in serious serious pain. You might want to go to a pain management clinic or talk to your rheumatologist or whoever um, about about uh, you know an opioid analgesic. The one that I, I like the best personally, I, and I, I was on about I tried about 10, 12 different ones, was methadone. It worked great. It's got a long half life, um, which means it stays. It takes a while for your body to break it down, so you only have to dose it once, twice a day, um, and it it provides relief around the clock. Whereas something like Vicodin or Percocet, you get a pop every every few hours, but um, there, are, there are tons of opioids. I mean, hydrocodone, which is Vicodin, oxycodone, which is Percocet, Percodan, uh, Oxycontin, and you, you get like Dilaudid, uh, morphine, fentanyl, 
uh, there's codeine. There, there's there's just there are tons of them. Um, buprenorphine. I, I could go on and on, but anyway, there's 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 tons of opioids. Um, some are better than others. They definitely work for pain. They work wonders. Um, so if you're in severe pain, you know it, it's. But if you're not in severe chronic pain, I, I would probably stay away from them because they can be addictive and cause problems down the line. But if you're in if you're in that much pain that you can't function, then you know they might be they might be necessary. And the last class of drugs I'll, I'll mention that uh, are commonly prescribed for Bichette's are creams, lotions, potions, ointments, mouth rinses, and eye drops. Um, as I mentioned, Bichette's can cause all kinds of problems with your skin, head to toe, all over the place. And um, there's a cream for everything. Some of them are antibiotic creams. Some of them are anti-inflammatory creams. Um, some, you know, they all they all... Some of them are steroid cream. They they all do they all different things, and I I won't go into all of them. But um, eye drops for you know the eye inflammation. There's prednisone drops and and stuff like that. Um, there's different mouth rinses. There's something called magic mouthwash that um, if if you have really bad ulcers, look into magic mouthwash. It never really did much for me, but I people online swear by it. I have a few friends with Bichette's that swear by it. Um, so if the ulcers are giving you a real problem, look into magic mouthwash. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there, there's just a billion gels and creams and stuff that doctors can prescribe um, for the various Bichette symptoms. So I hope this gives you a basic idea of some of the drugs that are commonly prescribed to treat Bichette's disease and its symptoms. Um, of course, there are others. You know, Bichette can cause so many symptoms that this video would be eight hours long if I was to go over all of them. But those are those are the big ones, and uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit from it. Uh, if you want to learn more about Bichette's, you can check out, I've written a lot of articles on my website, lsmichaels.com. Um, they're all heavily cited, you know. I'm a nerd, I spend hours and hours combing through medical journals and stuff like that, doing research and everything's heavily cited. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. You can read some uh, some articles about Bichette's. And uh, that's about it. So thank you for watching. Be well.